时间够。It's already time, and we have also formed a quorum. So I call the meeting to order. Item one on the agenda: um, information issued since the last meeting. Or rather, we need to confirm the minutes of the previous meeting. Minutes of the special meeting held on the 2nd of December 2013 has been sent out to you. We haven't received any proposed amendments. Please confirm the minutes. Any questions? No? Confirmed. Item 2 on the agenda. Information paper issued since the last meeting. Since the last meeting, the Secretariat has sent out one paper. The details are set out in the agenda. Please take a look. Item 3, date of next meeting and items for discussion. For our regular meeting next time, it will be held on the 10th of March 2014. There will be some changes to the proposed items on the agenda. Probably we need to have a longer meeting. Other than the annual report on Cyberport, which is on the second item in a list of outstanding items for discussion, as well as the renewal of the domestic free television program service licenses, and that's the first item on our list, and the government has already set aside a date for a public hearing. Probably the panel itself will have to hold our own uh, public hearing separate from the administrations. Other than these two items, um, two other items have been proposed by the administration. They are initiated by the administration. Uh, first of all, there's about the extension. Uh, of a uh, super new post for the uh, RTHK, and then another one is the creation of 22 uh, stations on the ground. Um, that's the for the uh, digital ter terrestrial television fill-in stations. Uh, well, of course, um, the uh, LegCo has already vetoed uh, the funding request for the new broadcasting house. Um, at first, uh, it was said that the establishment of the 22 digital terrestrial television viewing stations should come after the broadcasting um, uh, house. Now that that one is out, so we will tackle this as well at the next meeting. So the meeting will be held until 5.30. Emily Lau, depending on the development about the case of the RTHK, I understand the staff members are still uh, making efforts. They hope that they can convince the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development to come back to the FC meeting on the 22nd of February. Well, if this is to fall through, then um, it isn't just about the 22 fill-in stations. I think an account should be given to the LegCo. If the broadcasting house cannot be built, um, I think we need a full picture. Assuming that they can't go to the FC, then I want to know when they can come back to us. Well, in theory, the establishment of the 22 fill-in stations has no specific link with the building of the new broadcasting house for RTHK. Um, it was once discussed. There was no conclusion, so there is now this proposal to have it resumed. I think we can talk to the administration, uh, suggesting to them that it's better to have everything in one lot. Um, if not, we can have it again on the agenda of the panel. Yes, I agree. You better take up with the administration. That is to see if they want to put them together and come back to the FC. If they want to go to the FC, then uh, with the New broadcasting house, we can have that as well. If we don't have a new broadcasting house, we still want to know about the way forward. So make sure that it is a complete picture for us. Thank you. So for the regular meeting, anything else? And then for the public hearing, the government is going to hold uh, public hearings. And there will be four sessions now for the uh, renewal of the domestic free television program service licenses. Um, I think since the license hasn't been granted, and so probably the public hearing will be uh, very uh, sort of um, popular. In the past, sometimes the hearings are not that um, sort of um, well received. Uh, we didn't have a lot of participants, but probably for this one, we will be. Um, 
on Hong Kong Island Church, 17th of uh, February, and then um, 17th of March in uh, Kowloon, and then the 10th of March in the New Territories, Sha Tin. So three public hearings all to be held in the evening, and then there are also focus group meetings and luncheon meetings. 19th of February will be the date for that focus group meeting. Now, for the public hearings, they are open for all. Probably there will be a lot of interest, and the banners may be uh, blocking the views. For us, in our um, in the month of uh, March, in the middle of it, I'm sure uh, we want to look at the case of the renewal of the domestic free television program service licenses. 14th and 15th of March, either of them, it must be held in the morning. That will be the time for our own public hearing. So we will just match the diaries, and then we will invite the persons in charge of the two television stations, the government, as well as interested individuals. They will be invited. So we'll decide on the date, and then um, uh, interested parties may uh, put down the names for uh, attendance. Next, I have to deal with a letter from Mr. Sin Chung Kai. Um, you have received a copy, and then um, Mr. Sin is saying that we should have an additional agenda item. Um, I'm sure you have already read the content of the letter. I'm not going to repeat it. This Madam Ng, mm, it is said that she has been resigned. That there is doubt as to whether the government or anybody is behind the scene, the black hand behind the scene. Now, Mr. Sin wasn't with us a moment ago. Now, Mr. Sin is coming in. We're trying to deal with your letter, and that's about Miss um, Ng from the consultancy firm and its relationship with the licensing of free domestic television program service licenses. Mr. Chairman, the CG's office, as well as the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development, have issued announcements uh, denying any intervention. Uh, but still, I hope that the Secretary will come here to give a clarification. Both the CE as well as the SCED have said that they would like to follow this up. They would deal with the matter seriously. So. Um, I think it's better to give them the floor and explain to us as to what is meant by dealing with it seriously and what has been done. So other than making a statement in the electrical, we want to know what else has been done. It is said that the secretary hasn't come into direct contact with the person in charge, but I want to know whether he has approached her in other forms. If she, he has claimed to uh, want to take the matter seriously, to follow it up seriously. If he hasn't done anything about it, I would still want him to clarify. So this Ms. Ng has said that the administration has uh, misunderstood or has distorted her uh, report. I think his uh, claim that uh, he would follow up the matter seriously was in relation to that part rather than the resignation. So to what extent has he taken it seriously? I think um, that's about uh, Ms. Ng's claim that her report has been misunderstood. It has been distorted. Yes, when the CG faced the media, he did say that he would uh, deal with the matter seriously. And then in the uh, um, uh, briefing by Mr. Greg So, he had also adopted a high profile in criticizing her. Who else would like to speak? Ms. Mo, uh, I hundred percent agree with Mr. Sin's uh, request. If there aren't other views, then in the name of the panel, we will write to the administration asking for the following. That is, earlier on, the CE and the SCED have commented on Ms. Ng's statement that the administration has uh, misunderstood her report. Uh, it is said that both of them have said that they would seriously follow up the matter, and we want to know what has been done. So um, don't just talk about what they haven't done. I want to know what they have done. 
So we'll write it to them. All right. With no further ado, we will enter the agenda proper. First of all, public consultation on the review of the regulation of editorial programs and personal views programs. So you have already got the paper as well as the consultation document. Uh, at this moment, I would like to invite the administration's team to join us. We have Ms. Susie Ho, Permanent Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development. Mr. Zhou Wang, Deputy Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development. Mr. Aaron Liu, PAS for Commerce and Economic Development. Mr. Raymond Roy, uh, sorry, Mr. Vincent Liu, Deputy Director. General of Communications, Mr. Raymond Roy Wong, Chairman Broadcast Codes of Practice Committee of the Communications Authority, Dr. Carrie Che, Member of the Broadcast Codes of Practice Committee of the CA, as well as Ms. Katie Fong, Assistant Director of Broadcasting. Um, I'll give the floor to administration. Mr. Liu. Mr. Chairman, allow me to brief you and members on the background to this consultation document. Um, the CA received a large number of complaints saying that a domestic free television program uh, service licensee has broadcast uh, a lot of um, programs. Um, the program is one-sided. Uh, the audience has the impression that it represents the views of the licensee. Um, but then currently, the code of practice does not prevent uh, licensees in personal view programs in stating its own views. And for PVPs, this uh, format or its uh, presentation uh, the code of practice is silent on both the format and the presentation. Uh, well, in the light of the concern about licensee using PVP to uh, air its own stance, uh, we would like to uh, conduct a consult. Uh, we have conducted the review. All along, the CA attaches a lot of importance to the freedom of expression and with full respect for the uh, right of licensee to express its own views. Therefore, the CA's current view is that a total ban on the licensee to express its views um, on its service would not be in line with the situation in Hong Kong. But still, the CA must adopt adequate um, initiatives to make sure that the viewers and the listeners are fully aware of the nature of the program, whether it represents the stance of the licensee so as to assess the uh, program itself, uh, themselves. And also, uh, there must be a um, suitable opportunity for response, and there must be a sufficiently broad range of views uh, in such programs. Therefore, we have come up with a number of uh, proposed amendments. First of all, if programs contain a broadcasting licensee's views or perspective on matters of public policy or controversial issues of public importance in Hong Kong, then such programs should be regarded as editorial programs and should be regarded as one type of PVPs. Um, such programs should follow the existing ground rules on personal view programs, PVPs. That is accuracy. Um, there shouldn't be distortion of the facts. There shouldn't be any mis misleading uh, effects to the detriment of organizations or individuals. And then those at the receiving ends of the criticism should be given an opportunity for response. And there should be opportunities for a broad range of views to be expressed. As to um, the views of the person providing the service uh, would be regarded as the views of the licensees. Uh, we talk about persons providing the service, and it should be defined as the licensee as well as the persons exercising control of the licensee, such as directors, principal officers, and major voting controllers of a licensee. Thirdly, if the program contains the views of the person providing the service, then at the beginning of the program, there should be a suitable announcement 
identify clearly that the views expressed therein are of uh, are, or include those of the person providing the service. And fourthly, it should the now PVP uh, should be there should be a suitable opportunity for response to a PVP uh, on the same platform and targeting a like audience within the appropriate and appropriate period. Uh, the CA uh, wishes to strike a balance uh, and the public consultation will last two months uh, ending on the 17th of February. Uh, we will consider all the views before we come to a decision. Claudia Wu, Ma Fong Kwok, Ng Leung Sing are going to speak. Who else? Xi Wing, Mok Nai Kwong, Sit Ho, Chen Shi Chun, Emily Lau, and Quang. Four minutes each. Claudia Mo. I am very unsettled by the government's approach. Newspapers and TV are very different. Of course, newspapers have editorials, but TV stations, usually they don't have editorials. TVB, 以前王應時先生教我,香港電視或者一般的電視是不玩社論. Now, uh, Mr. Wong uh, Yingxi, uh, told me that uh, TV stations, uh, they don't play with editorials. Uh, 60 Minutes 2020, are they editorial type programs? Uh, they certainly have stances. Now, in news uh, reporting, there is a stance. Uh, you can't be impartial. Now, the government uh, worries me. Now, TV production uh, did not have any particular principles, but you try to rationalize them. Now, you uh, uh, now uh, you make a, this kind of response, and then Hong Kong TV will become a part of political machinery. Now, you didn't identify the TV station. We are only talking about one TV station, that's Asia TV. Now you are condoning the activity. Now you can go on and you can do this or that which is appropriate. Now uh, what is an appropriate response opportunity? Now I tried to contact them but they didn't re return my call. I also received uh, an invitation by ATV. Uh, by email to my assistant came at mid Day and they told me that the cutoff time for response is uh, one o'clock. If you don't respond, then the TV will be program will be aired. And uh, now you can now this is an uh, 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 unauthorized uh, structure. Uh, this is condoning. Them. The, they try to call it expression of freedom, and then they use all the resources, use the airwaves, they target a particular organization, whatever it may be, uh, or person, maybe that person is Raymond Wong, and okay, uh, you say a response has been made. This is very worrying. So, you you are uh, making an objection. Any response, Director General? Now, I already emphasized that the Communications Authority attaches a lot of importance to freedom of speech. Now, the uh, licensee organizations they have. Uh, uh, they are entitled to their own views. 
but they cannot do whatever they want. They have to be responsible in their attitude, and they have to follow the principles set by CA. They are turning ethical into unethical. Now, why don't you punish the uh, breach of the code? And yet you are telling them you follow the ordinance. We ask them to follow certain requirements. That is, these are factual programs, and the information submitted in the program must be accurate, and it must not be unfair to certain persons. The information must not be misleading to the audience, and it cannot be one-sided. Uh, it cannot be all about their own points. They must provide a suitable response. Uh, opportunity for response, and we think that strikes a balance. Mr. Ma Fong Kho, I'd like to ask, now the CA, in coming up with the proposals regarding editorials, uh, it says that it considered the UK Broadcasting Act of concerning service provider, and uh, it said in its wording that uh, uh, of, uh, in the press release that it has uh, also taken into account the Canadian provisions. Now, uh, what principles do these countries apply in their monitoring or supervision? Uh, for instance, uh, take Canada. They have a committee on broadcasting standards and they have a code. And the approach is that uh, for radio and TV, uh, if the stations want to express their views, which are their own comments, then they must be entirely separate from the news reported. Uh, so this is uh, broadly similar to our approach. Now, in the U.S., they have no uh, provisions at all. Uh, they can do anything. There are no rules to follow. How about the UK Broadcasting Act? <clears throat> For the UK, the broadcasting organization and the principal personnel cannot, uh, in the programs, uh, express their views on major policy issues or controversial issues. So different countries have different modes of uh, regulation. So you can't do it in the UK. So the proposals ABCD by the government has uh, mainly uh, drawn upon the Canadian experience. Yes, uh, we, our approach is similar to Canada's. Now, we have uh, two members of the Code uh, Committee on Code of Practice, uh, uh, broadcasting, broadcasting Code of Practice Committee of the CA, uh, Ms. Uh, Mr. Ray Wong and Ms. Uh, uh, Kali Choi, uh, the two of you, you might wish to respond. As Honorable Member Corey Wu well knows my stand on freedom of the press and freedom of speech, I do not need to defend my record. Having said that, I see no reason just because that legal person happened to be a corporation, the licensee, that is. The corporation itself is an individual under the law. And as such, should not be forced to lose its freedom of expression or speech. Again, having said that, it is my belief as a regulator that there should be certain constraints in place that when the licensee wishes to express his opinion on any particular subject matter, especially one that is controversial, that the viewers or the listeners, in the case of radio, should know full well that what is being broadcast is the station stand. And once that is known, it is also up to the licensee to provide equal opportunity for opposing opinions to be ex exposed to similar 
potential viewers or listeners. In other words, you cannot use the website and say, somebody sending a couple of tweets and therefore it's their reaction. That's not fair. <laughs> 其他的委員呢,如果可以即係話 Members, now if you wish to address questions to them, you can uh, Now concerning the public consultation Now Hong Kong is a place uh, with uh, very open and advanced communications now, we are talking about editorial-like programs uh, in, on TV, and I'd like to ask about the government, uh, about their response on the general policy, because uh, you mentioned uh, uh, point th the 31 points. Uh, on uh, supervision and regulation, and point nine says that the SEC has to ensure the accuracy of the news reported and be even-handed. Now, well, accuracy is paramount, uh, paramount, and uh, it's hard to say what's accurate and even-handed. Now, if it's a TV report, uh, they are. Uh, certain scenes. Now, if uh, very often uh, somebody's uh, comments might have been edited out and then there are arguments uh, on whether something has been said. So on what is appropriate and even-handed, uh, now I don't know how the government, when it comes to actual regulation, what would be the principles and what would be the penalties. Now, uh, uh, you might easily fall victim to uh, being partial, and uh, this uh, might be politicized, and uh, uh, somebody utters foul language and you edit it out. Now, also, uh, mode of uh, TV production. Now, I didn't find that phrase. Now, is there such a restriction? Mode of TV production. Now, uh, whether it will be editorial-like, will there be new terms, more creative terms? Because we are talking about creative industry. Now, if in TV production, can there be new modes that are creative? Now, uh, maybe given the controversy, uh, such uh, uh, creative uh, developments might become limited. So, in the course of TV production, does the government have certain inclinations? Two questions, one uh, policy-oriented and the second uh, perhaps, in, uh, uh, perhaps the PS can answer. Now, on on uh, what is uh, appropriate uh, fairness, now, uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, due, and par due partiality, now, now the government will weigh the circumstances and come to a decision. So on due partiality, now, when there is a complaint about, say, a news program that is impartial, then we look at the circumstances and the reporting to decide whether it's duly impartial. Now, and on the sanctions or penalties, uh, uh, on penalties, on deciding uh, how heavy the penalty should be. Now, if there is an infringement, we look at the nature, the seriousness, uh, the impact on the public, and we look at precedents. Now, when there have been similar circumstances, uh, what would be the penalty? Now, the lightest penalty would be an advice, uh, then warning, uh, serious warning, then a fine. 
So uh, all depending on the actual circumstances. Now on the mode of TV production, now the CA uh, regarding the editorial work of the TV or radio station, they have their own autonomy, which we will not interfere with. Now, uh, for editorial-like programs, now we treat them as PVPs, uh, one variety of PVPs, and the mode of regulation would uh, is that applied to PVPs. But before the program is aired, uh, this has to be, it has to be stated that it uh, contains the views of the TV station. Hey. Mr. Yuxi Wing, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I read the paper in the light of the complaints received over the years uh, concerning the inappropriateness uh, found in some editorial programs and personal view programs. The administration would like to tighten up the regulation. My question is, uh, well, the broadcasters include radio stations as well, as well as uh, internet uh, radio stations. Um, so I want to know whether the regulatory framework will also um, apply to them so that they are subject to the same rules as the TV stations, so that they will abide by the same set of rules consistently uh, in relation to being uh, impar impartial. Now, the administration has said that uh, the requirements are about accuracy, impartiality, and fairness. Usually, for a uh, personal view programs, uh, we have got a program host. It seems that uh, the rules regarding TV program uh, hosts uh, are stricter than those for radio uh, program hosts. Uh, radio program hosts usually spoke, uh, speak with greater subjectivity. So I just wonder whether both TV stations and radio stations should bear the same responsibilities, or would you say that they are different? Mr. Liu, um, the existing rules as well as the proposals in our review uh, apply equally to both TV stations and radio stations. But just for sake of clarification, for radio uh, stations or on the internet and also other broadcasting uh, programs on the internet that are not uh, regulated by us. Now, for personal view poems, a particular TV station has its own views concerning a particular issue. Or I can say that uh, superficially it is supposed to be objective, but in fact we see that the views are sort of uh, um, one-sided, um, but sometimes the hosts, the radio program hosts, are more subjective than the TV program hosts. Now, we want to check whether the views expressed represents that of the licensee. If not, if it is simply the view of the program hosts, whether we're talking about a TV station or radio station, they are currently already subject to a particular set of rules. They are PVPs, so the hosts can have their own views, but still they have to follow a set of rules. Say, for example, if they criticize others, they should give the others a, a chance to respond, and they must also allow for a broad range of views. It cannot be one-sided. We may not be able to say that um, well, uh, of course, within the program, there can be different views, but then we want to make sure that different views can be allowed a chance to be expressed. Well, who will judge whether it is a personal view program or whether the view represents the licensee? Is it a subjective judgment or is there a panel to make a judgment as to whether the view represents the broadcaster? Well, if our proposed revisions are to apply, then um, the broadcaster must make it clear 
uh, before airing the program if it hasn't been announced and if later on we establish that it is indeed the view of the licensee then it is a breach of the regulations and then we have to um, enforce the law in other words they have to make an announcement in advance yes well, I just want to remind members that uh, this is about the regulation of editorial programs. The uh, codes of practice uh, are silent on editorial programs. Uh, we only have got rules on personal view programs. I have been hosting many personal view programs. Now for the uh, review, it applies to both TV stations and radio stations. Yes, in fact, uh, ATV Focus uh, is in fact a program in question. I can name the broadcaster is the ATV and um, now uh, we have got a very simple document here. We would like to plug the loophole. Instead of creating a new subcategory, uh, the editorial programs will come under the personal view programs so that um, we have this uh, new concept person providing the service when the licensee is to express views concerning um, matters of public policy or controversial issues of public importance in Hong Kong. So I, ju I just want to make it clear for your sake. Charles Mock, I agree with Claudia Mo. Um, TV stations are usually f uh, providing service free to the uh, audience. So it is quite different from papers, newspapers. We mustn't uh, deny the licensees of the freedom of expression. And then sometimes the views are radical or they are critical of individuals, organizations, or political parties. But then they, um, they are licensed to use the airwaves. So to us, we believe that we mustn't allow them to make use of the public assets for uh, uh, personal gains. Now, on the in the beginning, I was worried that it seems that we're trying to rationalize what has been done. So in the future, they will continue to criticize and even more radically as long as they are able to pay some uh, lip service. Ms. Mo uh, has this experience, so have I. That is, you are given an hour or two to respond to their invitation. So we're really worried that uh, when this is implemented, they are simply getting their acts being rationalized or legalized. As Mr. Yu has uh, suggested, um, maybe our channels uh, will also come under regulation uh, on the pretext of regulating editorial programs. Currently, the CA doesn't have any power over the internet radio stations. Uh, I must say that we mustn't sort of extend the regulatory framework to the internet radio stations, um, whether the stations have got um, video, uh, visual images or not, because in that case, we would be narrowing the scope for freedom of expression. I think we should focus on subparagraph D of paragraph 5. That is, a suitable opportunity for response to a PVP should be provided on the same platform and target a like audience within a appropriate period. In the past, some uh, TV stations may read out a statement. Uh, I just wonder I, I'm, whether I can be sure whether they are given the ta same time slot. Now, there might have been some strong criticism, and yet only a few hundred words are being read out. So I want to know about the format. Can the person involved be allowed to request for a response in person, or whether it is up to the licensee to decide how the response would be expressed? So are you going to uh, regulate that as well? Mr. Liu, are you going to be very specific so that uh, if somebody is criticized for three minutes, the, the target individual will also be given three minutes to respond? Or um, can I insist on appearing in person? The CA will not intervene in the editorial independence of the licensees, so um, it is up to the broadcasters to decide on the format uh, of the service. 
but currently we do have this um, uh, request, uh, this requirement that is um, on the same platform. There should be a suitable opportunity for response, and there should be a sufficiently broad range of views. In other words, for the same TV station within the same program, within the same series of programs, with a similar uh, audience uh, being the target audience. Say, for example, you can't say that uh, on the TV uh, screen a particular program has been aired, and yet the anybody interested can only um, give a reply or make a response uh, on the website. Then that shouldn't be regarded as the same platform, Mr. Chairman. I'm afraid that out of good intentions, you may uh, end up in uh, legitimizing such uh, undesirable practices, Mr. Liu. We'll look at the nature of the program, the content of the program. We'll try to see whether they are providing opportunities for others to respond. Uh, to respond, um, Mr. Chen, Mr. Chairman. Well, you know that we have been in the um, radio uh, programs. We have been hosting radio programs for so long that we know. I don't think that. Um, we can expect anything good out of this review. It is very difficult to regulate. It is difficult to write the code of practice. Even if you have the codes of practice, it's difficult to enforce them. You know that all stations have their own stance. Uh, they can select who to interview and for how long the interview will be aired. Now, you are in support of uh, national education. You are against the um, issuing of more free TV licenses, and then the views are being packaged as a PVP. Now, it is said that uh, you have to make a statement saying that this only uh, reflects the personal views of the program host and or the individual contributors, or it only reflects the views of the station or both the views of the station as well as the program house. So it seems that the result will be the same. In the past, you disguise your views um, you behind the facade of a um, contributor. So it's a matter of whether you're going to admit it or not. And I think it's a double-edged double sword. You may have a program um, to affirm the rights of the um, homosexuals, and then you have to provide the same platform to those who are against the uh, equal rights of the homosexuals. In year 2007, the Broadcasting Authority lost a case in the Court of Final Appeal. The Broadcasting Authority said that um, um, there was um, this program, and then it was not impartial. The broadcaster was not impartial enough. Um, as long as you are not biased, and then it will be fine. So the broadcasting authority lost the case. The broadcasting authority. Um, so. What I want to say is that yes, you have discussed a lot. I just wonder whether when it comes to enforcement, you will face the same difficulty. Now, it's a matter of asking the broadcaster to admit it. Currently, they don't admit it. They just hide behind the disguise, uh, though they're actually telling the audience what the station thinks. So what will happen after they have confessed it, they have admitted that it is their own views? Mr. Liu. Well, there are two points here that I hope members will um, be clear about the impact of the proposals. First of all, whether you admit it or not, that is, the licensee must state clearly that it, it reflects the views of the um, station. The effect is to make sure that the viewers understand the nature of the program so that they can judge the program. So it's not the view of the program host, rather, that's the view of the um, 
station. And then for such programs, we emphasize that there must be a sufficiently broad range of views. Mr. Chen said that uh, there was a program that aired to views in a one-sided manner. Um, this is problematic. We would like to have a broad range of views. So other than view, other than this view, then uh, perhaps another time slot, uh, the other side of the argument should also be presented. Now, if, even if they say, OK, this is our stance, and uh, so this has to be uh, same uh, handling as in previous programs. Mr. Ho, now, yes, this is a two-edged sword. Now, uh, this same provision, even if you pass this now, now in the future it can constrain other uh, programs. Now, now, if you are close to the government, you uh, wouldn't need to be scared. You can do the carry out and say the same things. Now, of course, every media organization uh, can have its own stance. Now, one provision has not been changed. Now, uh, it's uh, 35B. Now, one must respect the truth. Now, uh, the there cannot be any falsity in the basis. Now, uh, sometimes there has been no verification, and you uh, make criticism and uh, on an unfounded basis. And uh, and I like to ask this question to the CA. Now, ATV received many complaints. Some of them. Uh, say that they uh, have uh, spoken, uh, made comments without uh, uh, investigation of enough basis, and what penalties has the CA levied? Uh, 36B, uh, there must be respect of truth. Uh, any comments must not be based on false evidence. Now, these programs are factual programs, so the information supplied within the program has to be accurate, and it cannot make use of misleading or wrong information to mislead the audience. And if we receive any complaints, then we will check the information supplied, whether it's wrong. And in the past, we have found that what they might they might have said something that's not true, that's uh, um, erroneous information. So we did levy penalties. Now the commentator they uh, make use of impartial or even false facts, and then they mislead upon mislead. So. Uh, now, of course, we can accept different views in our society. Now, you, it's not just uh, e enough just to uh, allow different views to be aired in the same program. Now, you can have uh, different political stances. Uh, you have, uh, but you need programs that uh, are. Uh, uh, that offer the true facts, and you can have more than one TV stations. Uh, uh, the uh, code uh, in respect of uh, ancillary racial services now uh, 35B. Now, what uh, now you you need uh, actual penalties. Now, any actual examples, for instance, uh, ATV. Uh, now. The news report about uh, somebody dying. No, I'm talking about comments. Now, uh, on Asia Focus, uh, where they had, in what cases have there been penalties? Now, well, there was an instance where the uh, TV station said that the uh, readership uh, distribution is 60-40. Now. Uh, how about the other controversial episode? Now, I must uh, 
hold. Uh, I must uh, uh, regulate the time strictly. Uh, Emily Lau, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Liu and Mr. Wong if we allow these things to happen. Now, they get the airwaves, they get the license. Now, on many occasions, they might uh, use their license to attack uh, certain uh, uh, people with different stances. Now, uh, of course, we have uh, freedom of speech in Hong Kong, but they are licensees. Now, they can do many different things. They might be able to meet your requirements, and they might say, this is our stance. Now, do you think this is fair, uh, the two of you? Uh, the Deputy Secretary General first. We try to strike a balance. We do not want to uh, kill the freedom of speech. Professor Wong? So because by the end of the day, what are you talking about is the balance of freedom of speech and the right to respond. And that is what we're striving for. Whether we can succeed, I think, depends a lot on how, when this goes into effect, such regulations are being enforced. And in the past, I, I, I'm sure Mr. New has already mentioned Certain licenses have been fined left, right, and center for, for the big mouth, quote, end quote. But you will also appreciate that under the broadcasting ordinance, if a licensee continues to breach various regulations over the period of time, eventually, Worst case scenario is the license can be suspended. I mean, it's not as if they can get away with anything at any time. So the, the question is, if I might ask honorable members, do we stop broadcasters from having an opinion, period? Or do we let 100 flowers bloom? May I as a former journalist, a retired journalist, you are never a former journalist. <laughs> One is never a former journalist just a retirement, I would be very, very, very leery of shutting off all opinion just for the sake of some, to stop somebody who might be contravening whatever regulations there might be. Should be freedom of speech, but uh, the question is whether it goes too far because they control the TV station. They have many opportunities to express their views. So you offer them the other side several seconds to express the opposite view. Now you say in the code of practice, uh, they have to do follow certain requirements, and now you have uh, going to have a hearing on how to handle this. Now some people go too far. Now tens of thousands of complaints. This is uh, too much. Now if you insist on doing this in the future, you must have proper rules to handle this. Otherwise, the audience will feel helpless. Now you have the license. You control the station. You can say what you want. Now, I agree you need to strike a balance. You have to be careful in convincing the public that it's going to be very fair. Otherwise, the controversy will continue. Uh, Ms. Elizabeth Quack. Now, the topic itself is very controversial. Now, having heard my fellow members, uh, you all touched upon uh, where the uh, uh, basic uh, issue is. Now, uh, the, you must strike a balance. Uh, if we don't have any amendments to the codes, then what happens now will continue to happen. But with amendments, I'm a bit worried. Now, according to the proposed amendments, will they be enforceable? Now, also, members mentioned uh, many particulars that might be further clarified. Uh, 
for instance, the definition of service provider. Now, for instance, uh, commercial radio, uh, Chen Chiwan is the CEO of uh, the commercial station and is also a, a host. Now, if the code uh, comes to uh, into force, uh, now will will he be able to continue to speak as a host? Now, and in the same you say in the same series or within the reasonable period, you must provide reasonable opportunity for the other side to respond. Now, if someone uh, expresses certain comments at a TV program at 10 p.m. and you let the other side respond at 10 a.m., then the audience is different. You might be the same length, give them the same length of time. Now, will you call that uh, equal opportunity? Now, uh, please let me know more details of, on how it's going to enforce it. Uh, Mr. Liu? On uh, the program of Mr. Chen Chi Wan. Now, according to our proposal, uh, he is a principal officer of commercial radio. Now, if he expresses uh, com uh, his uh, opinions uh, in his uh, program, then he is speaking on behalf of the radio. And it, at the end, at the beginning of the start of the program, uh, that has to be made known. And as for the response uh, being at uh, uh, at uh, the next day. Now, would that be an appropriate? Uh, uh, now, the committee handling that will have to make a decision. It's very difficult to put in black and white uh, to delineate all the circumstances. Uh, and it also depends on the inter length of the intervening period of time. Uh, maybe it's uh, one month later or uh, one day later. Now, if we have the code, will it create more controversy so that you have to make many, many rulings? Can, is, is it going to be enforceable? Uh, may I respond? Now, on what the member said, we have discussed them many times in our committee meetings, but there has to be a balance. Now, looking at the code, now if we are going to put in all the details, then it's out of proportion because we are mostly talking about big principles. When a problem arises, we have a committee to study it. The committee would hold meetings, the membership, uh, would include co-opted members, so the membership is quite representative, and they come up with certain views, and then the uh, larger uh, committee uh, or uh, will then take that into account. Now, so we have a metric of uh, reasonableness. If we go into details in our code, then it would cause the code itself to be out of proportion. But uh, for some parameters, uh, reasonable period of time or similar audience, now that can be assessed. If he said that in the evening and the response time is at 3 a.m., then that's unreasonable and he will be, uh, they will be punished. Now, next, uh, Wong Ting Kok. Oh, Kok Hong. Now, okay, we're talking about ATV, uh, TVB and uh, the CCTV, uh, no complaints because no, people don't watch CCTV. Now, we are talking about uh, market uh, sanctions uh, that are that's not effective because there are only two licenses. One is for ATV. The ATV is uh, wasting our airwaves. They are losing money. Now look at Taiwan. If you watch all the commentary programs, you need 20, 240 hours a day. There are too many stations. 
Now, if you uh, if your comments are inappropriate, people turn to another station. The Hong Kong Hong Kong is supposed to be a metropolis. We only have two TV stations. Both are bad. ATV is obviously bad. So uh, they openly uh, attack somebody in uh, in the editorial program. Now, if it's based on facts, then well. What are facts? It's hard to say. I throw something, and then I was uh, taken out of. Uh, I was asked to go out of the room, and then uh, you you can say it's a fact, and then and then you can uh, exaggerate, and then you can uh, say all sorts of things. So they say, oh, he. Uh, through things, uh, and I, I did make that as a fair comment. So the market is failing, and the practitioners can't do anything. You have uh, only two stations. They can only work within either station. So uh, if you don't uh, liberalize the licensing standards uh, and let there be many stations, then you can't let the market uh, be effective. And the employees cannot choose to work for a better station. Now, the, if somebody tells others that um, uh, he works for ATV, then uh, he will be despised. No one would make friends with him. So it is willingness to work on this matter. Now, it is impossible for you to say that you want to ban certain views. Now. Uh, the Communist Party, of course, can tell us about the stance of the Communist Party. But uh, does anybody read Tai Kung Pao or Wen Wei Pao? Of course not. But then for ATV, uh, viewers are forced to uh, watch the programs. So the solution lies with taking away the license from uh, ATV, and then we can erect the problem at root. And uh, that's uh, for the public hearing. Now. They are losing money, but then they do this in order to seek favor. Um, so it is a shame for us to uh, see such a broadcaster in operation. Now, if you want to enforce the law, I think next time you should do more than just imposing a fine. You should consider revoking the license. Now the everything boils down to having two licenses only. Now if we have got twenty, it doesn't matter. Just let them um, suffer from deficits after deficits. So uh, once the CE has tightened up the licensing criteria with no choices. Next, Mr. Sin Chung Kai. Mr. Chairman, members who would like to speak have already spoken. A lot of them have already taken words from my mouth. Ultimately, it's a matter of the broadcasting policy. Now, currently, the administration is not uh, facilitating the development of our broadcasting industry. So I think it is high time for us to do something about it. Uh, we're supposed to get a get more licenses and yet the government's not willing to do so. So even if you add a few more rules to the codes of practice, they are just minor uh, revisions. And can you really enforce it? Are you going to get someone to, to listen to the programs, to watch the programs day in, day out? I think ultimately it is a matter of liberalizing the market so that there will be genuine competition. Now. Let's go back to the question of renewal of the TV license. Uh, my view is that I hope the administration can start the process early, and then um, we should also auction the spectrum uh, so that the uh, genuine competitors uh, can bid for the spectrum. Now, in the case of the USA, they are also um, auctioning their airwaves. They have a lot of programs. As Mr. Leung Kwok Hong has said, um, the views of the left, of the right, of the middle are all clearly uh, presented. Um, nowadays in Hong Kong, we haven't got the same. So if you start to auction the spectrum of the airwaves, 
um, then you may change the picture. Perhaps others uh, would say that eventually uh, the existing licensees would get back the license. But it doesn't matter. At least uh, uh, we can get some royalties out of uh, the process. I think if you auction this spectrum, I'm sure it will exert more pressure on the operators. As things stand, they are not under any pressure at all. Um, what penalties can you impose on them to be effective? I have asked the secretary about this issue. For a first offence, what is the size of the penalty? And what about the size of the penalty for a second offence or even further offences? Penalties. So, Deputy Director General or the Permanent Secretary? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, please answer my question, not the Chair's question or his question. For the uh, points made by Lang Kwok Hong and Sin Chung Kai, well, we are going to have two new licenses, even though we are not giving out three. We are getting two new licenses for the auctioning of the spectrum. On another occasion, I've already said that when we renew the licenses, we'll also uh, tackle the problem of the um, allocation of the spectrum. Uh, by auctioning the spectrum as to whether it will exert pressure on the licensee, if the licensees are to look at the uh, matter from the perspective of market, I'm sure um, they they will uh, bear this point in mind. So coming back to this point, if in the editorial uh, programs, if the uh, announcement is clear that uh, this is a program representing the views of the station, then it will make things easier. Now there will be warning, a severe warning, all the way up to a $1 million fine. So there are different forms of penalties. So the first time, a warning. Second time, serious warning, $100 fine, $200 fine. And then it will take a few years' time before we eventually reach the uh, ultimate uh, penalty of $1 million. Let's not have a debate on this because I haven't got a basis. It depends on the nature of the offense. We can't just be talking about the penalties uh, if uh, 5A, B, C, D, or E is being breached. Well, uh, as a result of the time constraint, I have to say that it is already 3.36 p.m. We have got a second item on the agenda. So. Um, on my part, I have some views. Uh, I will take up some time, just a little bit of time to state my views. Well, um, to be frank, it's tailor-made uh, for ATV because no other stations have editorial type uh, programs. Now, editorial type programs have been mixed up with personal view programs. In order to plug the loophole, the administration has come up with this uh, proposal. I think it you, you can't really regulate anybody's views. You can only regulate things like the facts. Now, if you want to regulate the formats of the views, now they are saying that uh, you have to make it clear that this represents the uh, views of the station. Mr. Stephen Chen is a program host. At the same time, he is also part of the management of the radio station. He has got two capacities, and then he hosts a three-hour program in the morning. The time slot used to be taken up by Mr. Albert Jack. So he's a program host. It is a PVP. And now you have got an additional type editorial program. So it's most confusing. So you're asking uh, him not to uh, host the program anymore so that he wears one hat only. Now you talk about um, uh, the definition of a service uh, provider and then um, the first service provider would include the director, the person in control, etc. So you are sort of um, giving tacit agreement to them to allow them to use proper access uh, for uh, private gains or private uh, interests. I think this revision uh, is a reluctantly accepted revision. It's better to have it than not. Now, some members uh, have been very angry about that. Well, of course, uh, we will be criticized. Maybe a TV program 
uh, host criticize you, but then the audience will uh, form their own judgments. If they don't revise it, what alternative do you suggest? So you can never tell when they will just um, launch a program against you. Now the, there is a PVP uh, or a tutorial program, and then. Um, if we don't have it, how can we talk about the um, free, uh, the individual visit program? How can we talk about the uh, rental issues in ocean, um, ocean um, city? Or so, I think you are simply fine tuning the personal view programs. In the course of practice, we haven't got a program type call. Uh, editorial program. Everything uh, stems from the um, ATV focus. I think um, Mr. Wong is right to say that you can't regulate others' views. Uh, this is not logical. Now, if we talk about facts, if it is inaccurate, if it is um, uh, a libel, then of course you can regulate. But here it is about the views. I won't talk about others, but I have been hosting a personal view program for a long time. That's why I can uh, tell you what I think. Usually I refrain from speaking to talking too much when I chair a meeting. Second round only um, is for Ms. Mo. Razor, I disagree with you. Of course, a corporation <laughs> as a person. Uh, the, uh, it's also entitled to free speech, fine. But if you disagree with the uh, South China Morning Post editorial, you can choose not to read it. And well, the same with Apple Daily, for example. But then we're talking about free-to-air television. So it's a, a very different matter. And we have many, many, many more rules and regulations for uh, the broadcasters. We, we have hardly any for newspaper newsrooms, right? There's a huge difference there. And, well, when you talk about the others, right, the Brits, the Americans, and the Canadians, they have different ways of dealing with this problem. Fine. They're all democracies. Hong Kong is not a democracy. We do not have this trust that's so necessary between the people the media and the administration. You will say, I was so glad to hear you saying that, oh, uh, they should have equal opportunities. But they didn't use the word equal. How equal is equal? They were using the word hapsik, appropriate. So what are we talking about? In quantity or quality being equal, right? And it's going to be so controversial. And last but not least, the whole thing is meant to make uh, broadcasters to be more responsible. But I'm afraid you're giving them the license to abuse its TV media power, what Emily was uh, saying. It, it's yet. just not right. You have uh, used up your two minutes. Uh, would you like to give some time to Professor Wong to answer? <laughs> okay. <laughs> because we can go you, on you, forever. You can go on forever. Okay. I can give my, a lecture for my, my, two, my. two academic years on this topic. And both the chairman and I are former <laughs> journalism educators. So I mean, it's meaningless to drag on. And I agree with the chairman completely. Whether you have this regulation or not, they're going to do it. I mean, who's going to stop them? I mean, are you going to no. say, okay, no more editorials? Why, they ask. They don't even need to GR this. Any court will throw it out. Why can't they have editorials? Why can't they have opinions? How do you answer that against no. the basic law? You don't have an answer. Not in Hong Kong, sir. You and I agreed 30 okay, years okay. ago. Okay, okay. 
All right, the two of you can find time outside of this meeting to uh, have the discussion continued. Maybe you can treat him to dinner. Let's move on to another item of the agenda, and I would like to thank the various um, guest speakers to come. I would like to thank Mr. Uh, Wong and uh, Dr. Choi. Next, uh, we'll move on to the. Brief on the work of Create Hong Kong. I would like to welcome Mr. Joe Wong, Mr. Ivan Jang, Mr. Jerry Liu, and Mr. Wellington Fong. Yes, you would like to start, and then the, your colleague can continue. Hong Kong to the economic development. Creative industry is uh, important for the economy of Hong Kong, uh, and uh, it covers uh, printing, publication, film, entertainment, architecture, design, etc. Now, uh, the uh, uh, it's uh, forty-seven percent of uh, GDP. Now, the uh, in 2007, uh, we continue to uh, fund the development of. Uh, uh, we establish the uh, FDI, uh, FDF, uh, to continue to fund uh, the developments. Uh, and the uh, CE uh, mentioned in the policy address, the government is reviewing the uh, film development fund so that it can uh, further develop the industry. We expect that the review will be completed in the middle of this year, and then we will report to the members. Now, for uh, other creative industries, uh, the government will continue to make use of the Create Smart initiative to uh, help the industries uh, and uh, to open up markets, uh, cultivate the talents, and uh, uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Liu can uh, take us forward. Uh, due to the time constraint, uh, actually we all have the documents, uh, so we'll try to be as succinct as possible, uh, Chairman. Thank you. Now, Create HK uh, uh, tries to nurture talent, develop markets, and Uh, make Hong Kong a creative center in Asia. Now, for our resources uh, to promote the promotion of the create uh, Hong creative industry is through the Film Development Fund and then the Create Smart Initiative. Uh, now, in May 2013, uh, the uh, CSI received uh, further uh, resources uh, and uh, in the past four and a half years, and in 2013, uh, these uh, results have been achieved, and we see that in 2013, we uh, worked on 75 projects, uh, including film and other creative industry promotional efforts, and uh, uh, funds uh, approved. Uh, now, uh, that's uh, uh, $12.2 billion. Now, on the cre helping in films, uh, the six films uh, we're talking about were made in 2013. Some of them uh, were on show in 2013. Now, uh, uh, apart from the one in the top right-hand corner, uh, now there is pro a promotion of that at the Berlin Film Festival. Uh, the other films are directed by new directors who have not made any film or made only one film. Now, as for other support, uh, ways of supporting the film market, uh, we're glad to report that since the middle of 2013, we have uh, uh, worked with the mainland authorities uh, so that Hong Kong films can enter Guangdong and be shown in the Guangdong dialect. Two films have been arranged to be shown at the end of this month within Guangdong province. Uh, uh, in, 
uh, the, uh, including the uh, Letter Day uh, Party on the right, and uh, they have been funded by FDF. Now, uh, the first feature film uh, scheme we already reported in the panel. Now, the film development authority should work, a member said, should uh, uh, work with the industry so that uh, in the course of uh, production and after production there can be more promotional activities to arouse the interest of the public and we will follow up on that. Now, mega events. Uh, now, uh, I, now uh, this is the 10th anniversary on the uh, Film uh, Entertainment Expo. Now, this is mainly at the ages of the uh, TDC, and uh, Create HK has also contributed, and this has uh, become the second largest film market in the world after Cannes and uh, film transactions. Now, I hope to move quickly so you can see more pictures and then uh, uh, you can... Uh, now, uh, this is uh, a one-year on-the-job training for new graduates. Uh, 57 opportunities were provided in the past year. Uh, now, uh, new animation, uh, first uh, any animation film first productions. Now this is uh, uh, Team HK station uh, in uh, this uh, won an award in uh, for creativity in Japan last year. Uh, now uh, in uh, Acon 6. Now any uh, uh, at uh, Kowloon Bay, uh, now they have uh, a uh, venue for uh, new artists and uh, uh, there were over 90 uh, bands and uh, singers who were able to perform there in the, this centre in Kowloon Bay. Now this is uh, the uh, a major exchange activity for tertiary students. Uh, and uh, last year, 120 students joined. Uh, 60 of them came from abroad, and 60 are from locally. And the opening up markets, uh, now uh, we see that uh, the TDC, Shaoxing uh, Shaoxing in, uh, Shaoxing in uh, Zhejiang, this is a matching uh, 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 opportunity to, for Hong Kong designers, uh, uh, brand uh, designers, product designers, so that they can uh, have an uh, integrating opportunity with the mainland counterparts. And uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, this was in uh, Guangdong last year, and this will be in Nanjing this year. There will be 80 companies in the creative category that will be exhibiting, and 60 of them will be SMEs, and uh, the uh, CSI will be providing financial support so that they can be uh, shown at this venue. Uh, this book exhibition, we are supporting this, uh, the publication industry, uh, Beijing, Taipei, and uh, Frankfurt. And this time, for the first uh, time, uh, they will be exhibiting in Bologna in Italy. And uh, also, we work through the uh, CCC, uh, HK Taiwan CCC, uh, and uh, we have uh, exchanges in Taiwan, and this is uh, one of the items uh, in November last year, it's about animation, uh, five uh, uh, animators, including uh, Ma Wing-sheng, and uh, they, they had exchanges with uh, Taiwan uh, animators, uh, animationists. Uh, now, to, uh, this is uh, our effort to assist uh, new fashion, uh, uh, up and coming fashion designers uh, to uh, learn from uh, experience abroad, and we work 
through a non-profit organization to have uh, two fashion exhibitions, one in uh, Paris and one in Tokyo, and uh, we were able to talk, take advantage of major uh, fashion uh, events uh, to have these uh, uh, this uh, 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 activity called Fashion Guerrilla on the side, and it has been quite effective. So these are very uh, new designers and uh, four companies were able to get some business uh, in Paris, uh, ranging from 40 to 200,000 Hong Kong dollars, and there was wide press coverage in uh, locally uh, at those venue, at those uh, uh, cities, and uh, and. Uh, 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 last year we had this Anycom 2013. Uh, this was in uh, Wan Chai. Uh, uh, it opened in July. Uh, uh, Anycom uh, uh, base. Uh, now uh, we were able uh, to uh, have this uh, uh, to attract uh, uh, over 900,000. Audience members. Now, uh, finally, at the uh, uh, end of last year, we were uh, uh, able to have this in uh, uh, Shui Po, uh, and uh, we work with the NGOs. We have a month-long uh, fashion promotion event, and uh, individual uh, LegCo members and former LegCo members. Uh, also, uh, actually went on stage to assist them, and uh, apart from the practitioners uh, engaging in promotion, <coughs> apart from assistance to them, we also uh, have uh, assistance for SMEs uh, in designing. Uh, the, we encourage the SMEs to make more use of Hong Kong design, and at the uh, lower right hand corner. This is the dessert workshop. Uh, it's in a small alley uh, in uh, Chim Sha Choi, uh, and uh, this is uh, the the new shop after a brand uh, redesign. Now, when you go in there, uh, you all the menus etc. Uh, come uh, under a unified image. Now. Uh, supporting uh, Hong Kong Design Center. Well, I'm sure you are familiar with that. So, uh, on performance indicators. Now, last year, uh, we in this panel we were able to provide some figures, and we are in the process of updating those figures. Now, 2,600 jobs opp opportunities. Now, uh, uh, this is. Uh, uh, the performance since uh, CSI is established, and uh, we we were able to have uh, 141 uh, incubating companies, and uh, uh, 1110 have come through, and uh, over 80 per 87 percent of the companies are still operating. So it shows that uh, only a uh, small number uh, in the single digits have ceased operation. Now, uh, this is uh, incubation opportunities. Uh, so, it, it, 22,000 seems uh, a high number, uh, but uh, this is also uh, has, uh, th been through workshops. Uh, so, over four and a half years, we have been able to provide many opportunities. Now this shows uh, uh, the, the, our support of talents in, in advertising, film, uh, product design, and other design, and there have been uh, hundred and uh, over a hundred awards uh, in, uh, from abroad uh, for our winners. And then, uh, very simply, in 2014, our main. Uh, uh, Projects as the uh, PS mentioned. Now this year uh, we will be doing three things in the film industry. Uh, first, uh, we uh, will be working with the Film Development Authority uh, to 
uh, encourage uh, the local audience uh, so that they watch more Hong Kong films. We try to be cost effective so uh, as to uh, nurture a large enough audience. And the first uh, feature film scheme, uh, we already have selected uh, three winners and uh, the, the sh shooting period would be uh, would start from May this year, and they can complete the films uh, by the end of the year, and we will maintain close contact with them in the interim. And thirdly, we review the Film Development Fund and the Film Guarantee Fund uh, since 2007, how they have been operating, uh, what can be improved. We hope that at the middle of the year, Uh, we can come up with preliminary views, and then at the end of the year or early next year, uh, we can come back to the panel and make a report of the result findings. Now, apart from film, now, as I said uh, earlier, uh, the uh, animation base uh, started in July last year. We will continue to support them. Now. Uh, on program arrangement, our staff have been talking to the relevant organizations and the other animation bodies on how to make better use of this platform. And also, we try to bring in more traffic, and uh, in the next few months, we will engage in uh, different uh, publicity activities uh, on the verandas. We will uh, put more uh, figurines and uh, we will also uh, engage in promotion on the streets in Wan Chai uh, so that the tourists can become aware of it too. And uh, in 2014, uh, in J April to June, uh, we uh, this new center at the police uh, married quarters will uh, be uh, in the last stage of completion. The management said that uh, uh, over 70 companies have formally signed agreements with them, and uh, when they fully open, uh, there will be about 111 companies. Uh, who will be able to exhibit their wares and uh, ha have their offices there. So in the recruitment of companies, uh, the first stage has already completed to the extent of about uh, 30, 70 percent of the space. Uh, we will continue to raise closely with them and uh, try to uh, provide publicity. Uh, now, uh, in the queue, uh, uh, Sun Chong Kai, Emily Lau, uh, Chong Shu Kan, uh, uh, Chen Chi Chun, uh, Sit Ho, Ma Fong Kuang, uh, three minutes each. Mr. Sin Chung Kai, but then he's not here, so Mrs. Regina Yip. Mr. Chairman, I listened to the report. It is said that um, we have clusters of creativity. What actually is meant by that? Um, for film production, we have uh, co-productions. Creativity can only be carried out locally. So what is meant by creativity clusters? Um, we have to globalize. And then you want to promote, um, you want to encourage people to go to the movies. I think if it is a good uh, movie, then people will certainly go to the uh, cinemas. Uh, are you going to subsidize the tickets? So I don't think you should exaggerate. And then you want to nurture, nurture the talents. But then I think a lot of DSC subjects are related to creativity, but few candidates take them. For fashion design, just over a 100. And then for comic art, I'm searching the information. So for commercial comic design, just dozens of them. And then for infotainment, uh, please also explain this term. I think you also uh, refer to digital design. So what I've got here is that for commercial comic art, 
just 50 plus candidates took the DSE. And jewelry art and design, 45 candidates. Introduction to theatre arts, 30, 43. Mrs. Yip, uh, please stick to one language only, otherwise it's difficult for interpreters. Now, innovative product design, 66. Jewelry art and design, 45. Multimedia technology, over 100. And then uh, dancing art, 61. So if you care to turn to the web page of the Hong Kong Examination and Assessment Authority, um, just a few candidates take the exam. Have they consulted your views? If there are so few candidates, how can we nurture the talents? So two questions here is to report an exaggeration. Secondly, um, have you done anything to boost the number of uh, candidates taking the related DSE subjects? Uh, we are an agency to promote Hong Kong as a center of creativity. I think this is about the positioning of our creative industries. So what we do is to engage in major projects uh, like the Business Design Week so that we can attract first-class designers and creative talents to come to Hong Kong. And allow me to cite an example. I said when compared with other Asian cities, there is one other con uh, question. Please don't tr drag. Um, there's also this other question about the SC. Well, for two years in a row, we have got the royal families coming to Hong Kong. You have got all the information in the paper. The second question, Mr. Chairman, is about education. I think uh, you were referring to subjects taken by the associate degree. No, no, that's about the SE subjects. I want to know if the Education Bureau has consulted your views. All of them have to do with creativity, like jewelry design, uh, commercial comic art. Uh, in terms of curriculum design, uh, so far, the Education Bureau hasn't consulted the views of Create Hong Kong. Directory. Next, Mr. Sin Chung Kai, it is good to have a target that is to promote Hong Kong as the capital of creativity. But we start to have so many slogans, uh, it is very tiresome. And if we can't live up to the claim, then it will become a laughing stock. My question is, um, the administration has got a number of agencies promoting creativity. Other than your office, we've also got the incubation center at the cyber port. And then the Film Development Fund also claims that it is working on creativity. For the Science Park, though it is an involving itself so directly, they have also been uh, there, there are also certain elements of creativity. So what is the division of labor? Um, head of Create Hong Kong or the PS? Yes, we have also got incubation programs. Be it the Cyberport, the Science Park, or Design Hong Kong, we've all got incubator programs with differences in the emphasis. For the Cyberport, it's more about digital entertainment and the uh, writing of apps. For the Science Park, it's more about research. And then they have also got something about writing apps. The three agencies do liaise with each other. Within the Bureau, we do look at the development together with them. So the focus is a bit different. So there is indeed a division of labor. Division of labor, can you be clearer? You also support the film industry. And here they have got the any comics and they also shoot films. Uh, giving support to film production. We provide the funding. Um, they can come to apply for the resources so that they get money to shoot their productions. For the three incubation programs that I've referred to, we are talking about the startups. Um, we provide this site, we provide some training programs so that the uh, budding uh, producers 
can learn how to do the business. So the focus is different, but then the training is quite similar, and we try to link them up with venture capital and angel funds. Next, Miss Emily Long, Mr. Chairman. We do support the many initiatives that the administration has been trying to do, and we wish them success for fashion design. At another panel meeting, we have also been talking about that. But it seems that it is for the piecemeal. We have talked to very young fashion designers. They find it difficult to develop their potentials. They don't have an office space. They can't even find a venue to display their work, and they don't have the channels to go overseas to come into contact with buyers. Just now, we have been told that you help them to go overseas. What? What is involved in the selection process? How can you convince us that the process is fair and open? And do you have a proper system to help the fresh graduates? We really want to support your work, but you have to be very clear. Um, we just want to know whether you will work on it, and then the TID would also work on it, so that it is a very fragmented approach. Secretary, a uh, permanent secretary, in terms of fashion design, I think there is some division of labor. Uh, the TID is also in the same bureau. At another panel meeting. When they talked about fashion design, they also、uh, liaised with us,、um, and we also work with the TDC in our promotion work. So、um, we we do have communication. We do communicate with each other. For the Economic Development Commission,、um, members also talked about. Ways to help the fashion designers. So we have got three different sources. How do you help the budding designers in terms of selection? In terms of helping them to go out, assisting them in uh, attending uh, fashion shows, taking part in exhibitions. Usually, they will try to apply for funding from us, and then they will say, for example, go to Create Hong Kong to get some funding, so that the whole batch will be sent overseas to attend lessons or to take part in、uh, exhibitions and competitions. So we do have a. Independence of the party to select the winners. We try to select those who are outstanding. We have got different kinds of training programs. Again, we have a selection panel, and、um, we look at their works, and then we、we'll、try to identify those who are outstanding. I hope the PS will take this to the Secretary for Commerce and Economic Development. I would like to get all the three agencies to talk to the panel together, instead of going to three different panels. Mr. Yu, from the information provided by the administration, I think the government has done a lot in supporting the films. In June last year. Uh, there was this、uh, idea to have quick approval from Guangdong、uh, Authority in August.、Um, there was this cooperation. Many people come over to Hong Kong to see the movies, and our movie stars are also well known throughout Asia and the world. But you, you haven't got continuity. In your promotional work, now the government has subvented a lot of film films.、Um, many Hong Kong visitors would like to、uh, watch the production of films. So, for films that have been subvented, I want to know if you can allow the visitors to、um, sort of、uh, go to. Watch the film production, so that they can get familiar with the movie stars.、Uh, so that when they go home, they will, will be interested and they will remember to see the movie when it is released. So I just wondered if you would consider such an idea.、Um, who will answer this question? Would it be Mr. Fong or Mr. Liu? For the 
production of individual films, it will be difficult for us to lead the visitors to watch their shooting. In fact, they don't want to be disturbed. Uh, we we have arrangements for location shooting. Usually, um, we don't want to have too many uh, bystanders. Onlookers uh, that will obstruct the uh, traffic, and also the producers or the directors haven't got any publicity plan. They don't want to divulge too much information. It is painful to have to answer the questions from the media so early. We we want the visitors to know more about our movie industry. Well, we are already having some ideas, though not yet mature. We'll ask our professionals, our experts, to consider what we can do to um, promote the audience interest in Hong Kong movies. Next, Ms. Enche, if I may follow up, I still have time left. No, you haven't got time. No, you have used up your three minutes. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. From the paper, I've read that. You would like to promote the creative clusters. You will provide office space. You will provide concessionary rental, so that they can start their creative business. I come from the business sector. I think what is most important is that you need to help them in such a way that they can really open up a market. The market of Hong Kong is too small. We've only got a population of few million. The mainland market is, of course, a very huge market. But then the competition is also very keen, as they've got a lot of talents. And for the mainland competitors, they are in the mainland, and they can design things on products that suit the needs of the mainlanders. For the local youths, they may design something which is uh, good for uh, the Hong Kong people, but they may not suit the taste of the mainlanders. Is there a way to help the local designers to learn about the needs of the mainlanders? And what about exhibition and fairs? You need to provide a platform for the building designers. We need to cooperate with the TDC as well as the CED Bureau. You may very well have the design. You may very well have a model for the product. If you can't produce on a larger scale, it will be very regrettable. Not too long ago, I understand that the S3 designed certain IT products. For example, for computers and TV sets, you have got a huge um, bundle of um, wires. I think they have been clever. They have made it wireless, and then you won't have the tangled uh, wires. Uh, uh, I think it was a very good idea. Sorry for speaking in English once, um, but um, I think some mainland manufacturers may be interested in producing the um, design. If there isn't anyone producing it for them, then uh, the design may have been copied by others, and it will be regrettable. Next, Mr. Chung Shi Ken. No, uh, I don't think your report is very satisfactory on creative industries. Now, I followed up on uh, culture uh, and uh, art. Now, uh, they are related. Uh, one is upstream, the other is downstream. <coughs> now, Hong Kong uh, Culture and Arts uh, is under Home Affairs Bureau. Whereas uh, commerce is under Greg So and yourselves, uh, commerce and economic development, create HK is under 
that bureau. Now they each work their own uh, area and they do not intersect. Now, when we sell uh, tickets, uh, it's six hundred dollars, uh, but uh, in Beijing they sell tickets at uh, twelve hundred yuan and it's full house. So. Uh, whether it's performing arts or, uh, or uh, 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 now uh, you are other forms, uh, but you are only focusing on film. Now you should have uh, at the ETOs in the mainland. You should have uh, officials uh, to uh, work with the mainland counterparts uh, uh, or with. Uh, uh, cinemas and uh, uh, art galleries, uh, and uh, so that when uh, we go to these different cities, hundreds of cities. Now, the, you can see that uh, this film about uh, films like uh, this film about the monkey. They uh, made lots of money. Now, you uh, lose money in Hong Kong, but you can make lots of money in the mainland. And Taiwan is already is doing that. Uh, now, uh, Lai Xingquan uh, is already an honorary citizen in Hangzhou. Now, uh, you should work with the uh, Home Affairs Bureau. You should study how uh, the arts uh, can become part of the creative industry. And uh, in overseas Chinese communities, they also like to see our productions. In Guangzhou, they don't have a professional drama troupe. Uh, why don't we go there? Now, we can uh, inform the, uh, the mainland people of our what we are good at, Chen Chi Chun, Chen Chi Chun. Now every year HK comes to make a report. They show us their photos, their parties, their exhibitions. They spend the money, but what direct benefits have they generated? Now I'm not going to talk about films. Uh, in film, I don't see any policy by the CE to uh, attract Hong Kong people to go and watch Hong Kong films. I'm talking about animation. Now, I, I'm i one of the minorities who spend money every week buying for uh, animation uh, books uh, every week. Now, now you spend uh, the money in, Ju uh, in last July, you had this uh, animation base. Uh, what's the effect? Uh, do people go there? Now, uh, you, uh, the, this comics house base, home, home base. Now, you can go to Taiwan and promotion, but what does it achieve? Now, you, you, one point, you spend $1.9 million on this comics apps. And then uh, I saw, uh, I did uh, uh, install this, and then uh, I didn't use it once, uh, uh, no more anymore after the first time. Now, you can say that uh, our animation is digitized and so on, but let's face it, you have failed. Now, let's so look at the uh, sales of the animation industry. The salaries of the workers in the industry, have they increased uh, in the past couple of years? Uh, Mr. Liu, now I try to answer uh, on the uh, number of questions, on, on, on certain questions. Now, the uh, 1.9 million. Now, uh, Hong Kong did commit to support the Design Smart Initiative, and then in the two years afterwards, now this, now the applicant will 
promote on its own and operate the project. So, uh, the, so the uh, so the uh, program itself cannot assure that it will uh, last uh, all through uh, at the end. Now, how about the comic home comics home base? Well, we we'll, you can get the information. Ms. Ho, I I agree that you should have some measurement of our success, say a contribution to GDP. Now, when you give us a paper, you should show the growth in the past five years uh, and how much has been injected and the employment contribution to GDP. Uh, you should show us a table. Now, this is just a suggestion. Now, I think officials uh, should uh, go to Korea and uh, visit this uh, cultural center in Guangzhou, uh, South Korea. Now, they are targeting uh, our uh, arts and cultural center. Now, they have a base. Uh, where young students can see how art and design can be transformed into actual products. So you don't just teach within the schools uh, or uh, start uh, uh, sub-degree programs uh, on these, but rather you let the students uh, real uh, learn about the industry when they are in secondary school. And this is a good systematic way to develop the industry. And image and text are a good basis. Uh, when the children uh, are uh, able to develop uh, some sort of feel for text and uh, 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 image, then they can later develop that interest and enter the relevant industry. And you see, uh, uh, the Taiwan uh, Youth Center, they have the space and the former police married, married quarters. Uh, is the space being well utilized? Uh, they should be a regular base. Uh, Ms. Liu, uh, Mr. Liu, now the creative industry in Hong Kong, we do have some figures on the value added in Hong Kong, and we can provide the figures for the past five years. Why we are not providing it this time? Very often the figures are only provided by the government departments in late February. So I don't want to give you the figures for earlier years, like 2011. Now, if we look at 2009 to 2010, the growth for the creative industry is 21%, uh, and 2010 to 2011, uh, that drops to 15%. But in absolute numbers, Year on year, uh, we can see progress. We hope that the 2012 figures will show the same upward trend. Please uh, supply us with the data later. Ma Fong Kwok, he is the chairman of the Film Development Authority. Uh, thank you for declaring that for me. Now, uh, I am the chairman of that body, uh, and I know that uh, the, the, uh, we, uh, a lot of work has been done uh, for the uh, films to be released in Guangzhou, uh, Guangdong. Uh, it has not been totally smooth. Uh, uh, we hope uh, uh, that uh, the work of the Film Development Council uh, can uh, be effective. Now, the publication industry uh, and uh, uh, the industry went to uh, many exhibitions. Now, uh, I went there myself. Now, 
uh, apart from showing up at the platform, uh, they were able to make other games. Now Create HK can uh, do a lot. Now publication industry is very important. They still face many constraints uh, when they try to enter the mainland market. Now in films, uh, it appears as if they uh, make some progress uh, institutionally, uh, but uh, uh, the progress is not across the board. Now, uh, looking at uh, many advanced uh, cities in Asia, uh, the uh, electronic side has developed rapidly, but Hong Kong has uh, been lagging behind uh, compared to Korea and Japan. We are not on the same level, so we can do more. So I hope to create HK can respond. And also on broadcasting. Now we've done a lot of work on films, uh, on f TV. Uh, now there are new licenses. I've said this many times. How can we uh, have uh, independent production, TV production companies? so that the large TV stations do not monop monopolize the market. Can we have independent TV productions uh, that can uh, expand into uh, Chinese-speaking markets around the world? Now, uh, Mr. Liu, on the publication. Uh, Through CIPA. We have uh, asked for, and we have got more um, opportunities for the local propagation industry to go to the mainland. Um, we have been working hard, but we haven't uh, generated too much um, sort of outcome. Last. Uh, um, I want to know. Um, whether we are already a capital creativity or whether this is a target that we're trying to aim at. We've spent a lot of money. We have got a lot of initiatives, but uh, <clears throat> it is difficult to tell in which we are particularly successful. Uh, we have Music Fest, we have the Film Festival, we have something about architecture, etc. So perhaps. Uh, we should be a bit more selective. We should try to choose a few areas to excel in. Even in the legal profession, you can be creative, like uh, coming up with new uh, packaged services. But we can't take it too far for the tourism industry. I think you can tell us about the number of arrivals, etc., and then it will be more concrete. But for your case, it will be difficult for us to say uh, whether uh, you are successful or not. Mm, perhaps by having the fireworks show, you have done something. So perhaps you can lead us to discuss the matter in a more focused way. Perhaps we should sort of uh, be more selective and focus in a few major areas. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for your question. For Create Hong Kong, um, when it was set up and we asked for funding from the electrical concerning Create uh, initiative, um, I think we have made it clear that there should be seven uh, objectives, and it covers a lot of things. We really have to cover many different uh, sectors. Um, Advertising, architecture, uh, publication, television, and music. So, in the policy, also we have sort of narrowed our scope to a certain extent. You try to spend more money on training the budding um, artists as well as the startup businesses, and we want to have uh, money on. Uh, we have adjusted the budget on. Major festivals, say for example, for the uh, film 
festivals and the um, sort of like the television award uh, uh, ceremonies were no longer funded them. So we would rather focus more on helping the newcomers and the startup businesses. All right, haven't we haven't got anyone wishing to ask questions? So meeting adjourned.